Now, the big problem is, how do we do feminist research when there are so many feminisms? Women don't speak with one voice and feminists don't speak with one voice. And that's a great thing because that's what we like, don't we? Um, as scholars, as academics, as researchers, different ideas, challenging different ideas. So you, I'm sure are aware that there are, for example, liberal and equality feminists um, who um, see the, the goal of feminism as achieving formal, perhaps, equality with men, see it as a progressive thing through law, through other social institutions, at achieving formal equality. There are Marxist socialist feminists who see the problem underlying uh, women's inequality um, a, a, as being class-based. So underlying patriarchy um, is the social division of labor. Um, a, a, and a class-based analysis. Radical feminists would like to separate out women altogether um, fr from men um, and, and see the underlying problem uh, as uh, male domination uh, of women and the only way women can deal with that is to remove themselves. Um, going on, we have difference feminists. Now, of course, a, a very influential and well-known difference feminist was Carol Gilligan, who wrote her seminal book, In a Different Voice. And what they looked at, they sometimes called cultural feminists, um, as well as difference feminists, or psychoanalytic feminists, was that men and women are not born innately different, but are socialized from an early age. And that's why they come to think in a different voice. Um, and what some of these cultural or, or, or different feminists feel is that in some ways there is a, a, a better or a positive quality to the more relational thinking that women have come to be socialized into. It's a, a lot, it's a contested view, uh, of course. It relies very much on developmental theories of childhood um, and socialization. Against that, of course, what became very popular was standpoint feminism. That is, um, taking women as a group and privileging the standpoint of the woman's voice and the woman's view. Now, there are very many different standpoint feminists as well. There are those, um, the main proponent was Sandra Harding, but um, the uh, black American um, sociologist, Patricia Hill Collins, was enormously influential in creating standpoint feminism from the perspective of marginalized people, taking into account um, the views of um, women of color, um, their class, their gender. And then, of course, my favorite feminist position, postmodern and post-structural feminists. Uh, and that's Judith Butler, one of the um, most interesting, uh, who wrote some really interesting things. Um, and of course, what they're doing is, is disrupting the whole idea that there is a fixed viewpoint, a true uh, viewpoint that we can perceive outside of the way thought is structured through discourse. Uh, and then finally, becoming much more popular these days, particularly among young feminists, is intersectionality. So that's a whistle-stop tour through only some of the very many feminisms. And what is the relevance of having so many feminisms for feminist research? Of course, they all, um, to some extent, um, give rise to different ontological and epistemological positions which of course are key to formulating and doing research.